we are about a third of the way through Lent. How's it going for you? If these past two weeks have been no different than any other, other time of the year, I am here to tell you two things. First of all, it is not too late to make a Lenten promise. Anything that you can do during this time to make you stop, think, and reflect about what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago, that which we're gonna celebrate in about a month here at Easter. So if you're gonna make a Lenten promise, I urge you to be specific. If you make something like, oh, I'm gonna pray more, tell me how, how often, when, what are you gonna do? Because if you don't make something specific, it's very likely that you're not gonna follow through with it. Second thing I wanna tell you is that if you made a Lenten promise and it's not working, it's okay to change it. Just because you made a promise two weeks ago doesn't mean you have to stick to it if it's not helping you grow. The whole purpose is to grow in your relationship. So if it's not working, change it to something that will help you grow. You think that two weeks ago when we talked to Ben Alexander about preparing for a race, that if his race preparation wasn't working or getting the results that he wanted to see, that he'd keep doing the same thing over and over? Or what about when Caleb Red was talking about working out to bulk up before a coach came to visit? If his exercises weren't doing it, do you think that he'd keep doing the same thing? No, he'd probably change. It's okay to adapt our plan to see the results that we want to. So to give you some ideas of what you could do this Lent, let's hear from some Spartans. Me and my family are trying to go to Mass every Sunday morning, and I feel like it's helping me grow closer to them and closer to God. And I've had a lot more time to reflect just on my past week and on my relationships with my sisters and my parents. So my Lenten promise is doing more things without being asked, like taking out the trash, uh, doing something like walking my dog, um, unloading the dishwasher and just making life easier for my parents. So during Lent, I've been trying to gain more patience. Um, this has been a little bit difficult. And I think it's a challenge for a lot of people, but um, this is helping me to get closer to God because my time goes slower. And for some reason I just, when I have free time, I just try something new. And that's something new is the talking to God, doing a little prayer, things to get a little bit closer with God. Um, having a connection with God does require patience. So I feel like this is a good step in the right direction. For this Lent, um, I'm really focusing on trying to stay positive. Sometimes I find myself you know, not always thinking positively. Um, I think in the world that we live in, it's you know, we turn on the news and it's been challenging and, you know, trying to see the, you know, good in all things, God in all things. And so I'm uh, really challenging myself this Lent to find God in all things and, and the good that's out there and not focus on the negative uh, messages that were sent. So while driving, I have this really bad habit where uh, I'm tempted to pick up my phone and check and text my friends. Um, and I decided for Lent it'd be better for myself and like to grow my connection towards God, to give up that great driving while like just being distracted on your phone, it's just, um, it's not safe. And how it's gonna bring me closer to God is uh, before or before I'm tempted or before I pick up my phone, um, I'm, I can say a little prayer, I do say like a little prayer and that just makes me think of God and you know how um, he's protecting me while I'm driving my car. So what I give up for Lent is soda. I know it sounds sort of simple, but it's actually a pretty big challenge for me. I kind of grew accustomed to uh, drinking it probably every weekend for most of my life, but figured now is a really good time to make the change. And every time I kind of think about it though, uh, my buddy James Lane and I uh, kind, of, kind of are giving it up together. So uh, just kind of consulting him with it and um, saying that we're all in this together is uh, a good thing to have. Uh, I used to think when talking about Lenten promises that it was almost a sort of competition uh, with, enough, with other people. So if I was talking to someone and they said that they were, for instance, I don't know, giving up chocolate, I might think to myself, oh, that's really easy. That I'm, I'm better than them because I'm doing something harder in my mind. But what I've come to realize is that uh, Lent's not a competition and we're all at different parts, different parts of our faith journey. Um, so giving up chocolate might seem really easy to you, but for, for that person, it might be pretty hard. So I just urge you to not think of Lent as a competition, but think of it as a time to grow closer to God 
regardless of what other people are doing. Okay, so I hope you got some ideas, but if you still don't have an idea, you don't have a Lenten promise, let me make it easy for you. Join the Lenten challenge. I have one small challenge for you each day. It's either a prayer, giving something up, or doing a kind deed for someone. One different little thing each day. I send you an email reminder and then you follow through with it. If this is the sort of thing that could help motivate you, then let me know. Let's get you on the list.